Tommy Forrester is dead. Tommy was going to be an engineer. He was 22, good-looking, personable, athletic. He had a high IQ. The dean said he had the best potential of any man in his class. But Tommy is dead. His problem was acid, lysergic acid formula 25 called LSD. A close friend told him LSD was psychedelic, mind expanding, said it would give him fantastic new sensations and thrills. So Tommy tried it and his friend was right. At first, the LSD made him sick at his stomach, but then Tommy began to hallucinate. The air began to be filled with rainbows. The very atmosphere seemed to be a moving current of multicolored particles which came streaming down around him. When he listened to the stereo, he saw colored particles floating out from the speakers. When he looked at the walls, they seemed to be melting the pictures on the walls became liquefied with colors running down like waterfalls. It was sensational. Inside himself, Tommy felt sublimated, sort of suspended in space. He had a euphoric feeling of wonderful well-being. Then he looked in a mirror and something horrible happened. First, it seemed that half of his face was rotting away. Then he began to see himself as a grotesque, misshapen monster. He looked around the room and all the people were becoming monsters. Everybody knew what was happening to Tommy because he began screaming and describing what he was seeing. Tommy had the feeling he wanted to smash his head against the wall to bring himself out of this stupor. He did it. Blood spurted from his nose and a large cut bloodied his forehead. But he felt no pain. Then he pounded his head on a doorpost. Somebody in the room tried to stop him. He felt they were his enemies, so he jerked away. He ran into the next room where an open window looked out on a roof across the street. It was 18 stories to the ground. Tommy thought to himself that the roof across the street was really just a few inches away. He could jump on it and thereby escape. He tried it. Tommy is dead. Not everyone who tries LSD for the first time gets such a violent reaction. One authority estimates that among first-time users, about one out of 20 will go into a traumatic nightmare such as Tommy's. As for the other 19, their reactions are unpredictable, but will range all across the emotional spectrum. For some, it will be a scintillating and exhilarating ecstasy. For others, it will be repose even stupefying. The cult of LSD users call any of these psychedelic experiences good trips if they don't end up out of control. But they never know when a bad trip will hit them. Just about the time a user begins boasting that he has become a real acid head and suffered no real ill effects, a bad trip can sweep him into emotional oblivion. A bad trip can send him wandering down the highway seeking to merge himself with some speeding automobile. It can send him into epileptic fits, make him schizophrenic, or permanently impair his sanity. It may rob him of the will to live and terminate in suicide. Others lose a sense of identity and cannot tell where the boundaries of their own bodies separate them from their environment. With some, there is a feeling of deep despondency and an accompanying fear that is wrong for them to go on existing. Even on so-called good trips, the acid user often becomes a serious hazard to himself. His whole sense of reality becomes distorted. He thinks he can fly like a bird or walk on water. He can look at a crack in the sidewalk and shrink back as though it were a Grand Canyon. Or he can look down from the top of a skyscraper and have the feeling it is barely inches to the ground. Scientists suspect that the LSD has its greatest impact on that part of the brain which decodes and interprets sensory impulses. 
by paralyzing or scrambling these sensory signals. The patterns in the brain become flamboyant, twisted, unreal. Sometimes the user thinks he can smell or taste the sound of music, or, as was the case with Tommy, he thinks he can see the music. The capacity of the brain to associate the present with the past is impaired. Perfectly familiar objects may seem completely foreign or non-identifiable. At the same time, the most bizarre associations seem to cloud the conscious mind so that a user can be looking at a person and suddenly gain the impression that that person is dissolving away or turning into some kind of a strange monster. As with all psychedelic compounds, LSD not only diminishes the instinct of self-protection and self-preservation, but it removes the natural inhibitions. A professor of a Philadelphia university came out of his LSD spree to discover that he had been running naked and bleeding up and down the boulevard on which he lived. A prominent official of the government was found naked and freezing in the topmost branches of a backyard tree. From the point of view of the police, the problem of psychedelic drugs is not only what it can do to the user, but what a temporarily demented user often does to other people. During January of this year, four teenagers on a binge of LSD rammed into a house killing a three-year-old child. The police found the driver of the car to be in a psychedelic trance. After placing him in a jail cell, this teenager tried to climb the wall, shouting, I'm a graham cracker. See, my arm just crumbled off. A woman in California who prided herself in being able to take LSD without any ill effects took a knife and slashed out the eyes of her child. A 30-year-old medical student who was recently apprehended for murder admitted that he had been under hallucination drugs for several days. His dazed brain was puzzled by the presence of police officers. He looked at them and said, what have I done, raped someone? He had actually killed his own mother. All I have said so far about LSD is really an introduction to this recently developed acid cult compound. Nevertheless, I hope it will help you appreciate why some doctors have referred to this as one of the instant insanity drugs.